Okay, so now I'm adding in a brown, but it's still a darker colour. And you'll see I do have some lighter browns in there, so I will actually be adding in sort of a golden brown. That thread's going to get in my way, so I'm going to trim that off out of my way. Excuse my hands. And I'm really just touching on what I've already done, I'm not um, filling in a lot, just to add that extra colouring. You don't want to make it boring and just all black and white. See that? And see how it um, just adds in a bit of texture to the tree. Put it in here. And I'm going to go over what I've already been. You can see I'm getting thready because it's starting to pull a little bit. It's taken a lot of thread for it to get to that point. So you hear it tap, tap, tap. Said I'm not going to go overboard. And then once I've done a little bit of highlighting with this one, then I'll be highlighting with the uh, golden brown, but not too light. I don't want it to look like it's not meant to be there. sometimes. That's the beauty of this sort of thing. You've got a photo there to go by but if you want to change some of it, go for your life. Just make sure that fill that little section in. So you can see a, a line happening. Looks like I've got a thread loose but it's not. So I'm just going to come down this side. I can see a thread there. Sometimes I need the right light to see them. Starting to take shape, it's starting to look more like a tree in the sunset. Okay, well, I've got that colour in. Um, me, I like to do all the areas of that colour, and although they look black in the base of this, they're more in the dark browns and even dark greys. So, I'm going to do those while I'm here. And as you can tell, I'm going in the actual uh, direction of the photo. So being backwards and forwards this way, I'm going this way. I'm not going little back that way. Okay, so I'm just going backwards and forwards because that's the direction of the, the photo, as I said. And I'm filling in, I don't know if you can see that there, but I've filled in that little tree way in the background. So that's filled in. I'm going to go up here and do that one there. So I'll travel up and I'm going backwards and forwards for the simple reason that I've really got to make it look like a tree rather than... I don't want it to be satiny stitch, I'm sort of um, filling in, a bit like colouring in. So then I'll move away and I can see what I'm doing. That's why an open toe foot would be better than this. I used an open toe foot and it's nice. And you can see there a little bit of the, the bobbins coming through. I'm not overly worried because I'm going to come back in with a different colour there and it'll cover that over. 
in this is the shadows in the grasses so I go along a little bit up and down travel along and just put an outline and like I said I'll go over that with the yellows so it's not really a big deal if I have this little line squiggling across there I can break that up a bit later um, and I'll cut off you can see see how it's starting to take shape again here this one's a little bit darker than the other one so I might actually end up putting in some of that deeper mauve one underneath I'm going to do the top of it in this while I've got it in and then I'm going to jump along here and just do those little sections I like colouring in with a few of pencil in your hand you squiggle along Getting those little details in without even really trying. And you see, I had a bit of a jump there, which you know happens because we're concentrating and we sort of jolt around a bit sometimes. And um, that's okay because if you do do that, it's not something you can't undo. Like I said before, you can go back over with your darker orange or your next colour and cover that in. So you can see how it's starting to create a bit more there. So again, this has got like a, I can see the run of a line through it. So I'm going to colour it in. A little bit like colour, you know, paint with numbers. All you're doing is selecting your colours that you're going to use. Come down there because I think I need to use a little bit more of that purpley colour in there. I'm going to travel up under here and I'm going to come up there because I want to catch those and you can see I'm doing some little rough ziggy zaggy sort of things. This is not using the zigzag stitch, it's still a straight stitch but it's um, still giving me that nice uh, ziggy zaggy look, messy, which is um, what the scene looks like really doesn't it? So again here what I'm going to do is because I had accidentally gone over you can see I went over the shadow I want to go crossways just to break the difference up in the base of the tree and I'm going to go back and forwards on a different angle just to give it the angle of the shadow because obviously the sun is coming across on that angle you can see from the other shadow so back and forwards, fill that in. Okay, and then I might actually I'll make it jagged between the two so it sort of blends a bit better. And then I might actually throw some of that deep plummy colour in. And you can see it becomes more like a shadow than it was before. I think I need to meet up with it in here. here and go into the next one and you might look at it and go well brown's just not the right colour but I'm actually going to add in different colours shortly like that plum and that um, darker grey but not a lot of them like I have in the trees. I'm going to try and keep it more, uh, more in the tones that the ground is. the way the shadow runs, runs along in that direction so I'm actually running the stitch in that direction to give it a bit of life. And I'm making it go up into the trunk, blend them in without overdoing it, I don't want to overdo it. And I'm going to turn it so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to come along this way and then I'm going to start on those 
because once the shadow runs out, I've then got these little bits of grasses. And looking at them, I could probably even use some of that really deep blue. See, I'm not filling every single inch of it. I'm leaving gaps in between, so it gives it the um, illusion. You can see the photo behind it. I'm turn it around this way so I can see where I'm going. I'm going to leave those and come back to them. Excuse me. And I'm going to come up here because this line here, that's actually a fence. So you'll see. is actually going on the other side so I'm going to cut off and come over there and follow on with that. As soon as I see the fence, I'll just line backwards and forwards just to fill that in. So can you see that taking shape there? I can all see you nodding and, and yes. Okay, so you can see I've left a bit of this one here because I think I need to put some of that bluey colour in. So I'm just going to change my thread and swap over. Okay, so I've changed over to the blue. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm starting up in the shadow. I'm going to drag the blue out through here. I do need to get rid of that little tail. So bear with my hand in the way. There we go. And because I'm dragging it from the shadow, it'll just blend in. And mind you, even though it looks like a really bright blue, once I put that grey next to it, it'll um, soften up and you can see I'm not going in all of those dark lines because I want to leave some for the grey areas some of that in here just a little just so it doesn't look like it's out of place what you don't want to do is outline the tree in a black line and make it look like a cartoon okay it still leaves me room for the other grey trees, the burnt trees um, from after the fire, 
I didn't have everything black. I actually had it in really deep, deep uh, brown, and although I did it fairly simplified, um, it still looked better than just a black. Um, I think just a black on its own can look rather stark. And I'm just going to put a little bit in here. up my threads. I think that's enough blue and um, you might stop and start and change your mind and add more in later but for now um, you can see I've got a little bit of a gap between there but again I've got that grey and um, I'm going to swap over and use that one now. Okay, so I've just changed to the silvery colour and again I'm only going to highlight, it's really there for highlighting, um, highlights and lowlights, just to add in a bit of extra colour and I can see that the one I just did then, this one here, it looks too, too neat, um, there shouldn't be that definite line there so I'm going to mix it up a little bit and scribble over the top and blend it in. See how that looks a bit, a bit more blended? So it is very hard to see the stop and start of where the tree bases are. Um, and it doesn't really matter if it, you can't see them. Um, it's nice to see the difference but it's no biggie if you can't. In the middle there. And if I go backwards and forwards, hopefully, with a bit of luck, it might give the illusion of it going between one part of the tree and the other. Um, and once I trim it up, it'll probably look nicer. And then I can bring that colour, drag it in there. So it looks like it's coming between the trees, behind them, coming in behind there. This one here, and in here, just um, do a bit of blending, and that helps with that brightness of that blue as well. You know, it's, you sort of want to just tone it down a little and you join them up. Like I say I joined up in the photo work along slowly and steady. And again that one looks like it's got two different lines so I've just broken them up a bit and give them a bit of a rough up. Yeah, a bit of texture back and forth nice and quick. Swing her around. And I'm going to come here because I think I need to just, I might come this way because it looks more like grasses than it does anything else. So I'm going to come up in the direction that it's going so it doesn't look like um, I've made the tree furry. I'll come over here and put some in there as well. If you want a unison from one side to the other. actually pop some of that in there because I've got some on the other side so I'm just going to run another line and I'll probably throw in a, another colour a bit later. You can see here 
do some little bits in the background. I want to fill them. I want those trees to sort of be there. I don't want to just stitch over the top of them. I want them to be there so it gives me um, the, the depth of the photo. So again, I'm going to change my thread and I'm going to change it to the, um, the orangey tones now and you'll probably be surprised with what I choose, but um, when you do yours, you can choose your colours. So um, I'll be back in a minute once I cut these threads and change change the, uh, the reel of thread I'm going to use. Okay, so now I've popped in a, a colour that's sort of a brownie tone, sort of goldeny colour. Um, and I am going to come in in all these areas. But I am also going to chuck in a bit of an apricot colour in here because I can see that in between. But I'll, um, I'll do that with a zigzag later. First things first, I want to do uh, the straight stitching. So the zigzag comes last. So I'm going to start outside things so I can cut off my thread again. Stitch it in, maybe even. There we go. Stitched in. And what I like to do is outline the edge of that. And like I said before, if you've got a open toe, it does work better for you um, when you're trying to do fine detail like that. I'm not going to go along the whole top of that in that colour. It needs to change halfway across. As you can see, the colour of the sky changes. It's got to change as well. So I'm just sort of fill that in, like colouring in a picture like I said earlier. And once I've got that sorted, starting to take shape. And because I've officially got a creative license, <laughs> I can change it anyway. And so can you. So I'm doing all the straight ones first. some of the areas I'll actually miss and I'll purposely miss them because I want them to be there after the fact. I think Dottie's falling asleep. The shadow behind those grasses. Let's see. later. Now if you find that your thread keeps breaking all the time, you might need to actually slow down even more. I can see this, this colour seems to be shredding a little bit, so fingers crossed I can beat it. Again, I'm going to blend that blue in by blending in that brown into it. And because my machine slowed down, I have. You can see that bit of thread there that's getting in my way. I am effectively stitching into it. So you see how now she's starting to blend a bit more. So the breakup of those colours really works. But you are going to need quite a few colour ranges and they might only be one or two shades darker or lighter than each other. Um, 
but that does make a difference in the whole scheme of things. So I'm sort of done there. I might actually put a little bit above there. And because that's sort of grassy, I'm going to go up and down. Without it looking silly, of course. I'll just trim those off and then I'll go the other side. I like to trim as I go. even though that looks like an orange it's um, more apricotty than orange these are just shadows from the fencing fencing but I'm still going in the same direction so back and forwards to fill around those trees been whether I need to do more there and I think that's okay there and I might just put a little bit in here and forwards fill in between travel down on the side if you need to just to get in between there where you need to go it's nothing for me to stop foot up Sorry, needle up, where's my needle up there? And then travel over like that. I've done that many, many times. So if you feel more comfortable doing that, you can do it that way. Keeps your stitches in nice and firm. will appear quite bright when I first start but I will work um, blend it in and, and tone it down um, I'm still working in those directions that I could see before. I want to make sure that I still go in that direction. My body just got a jolt. <laughs> wasn't me, I didn't keep up. <laughs> Alright, I might have kicked it under the table, but don't tell anyone. Okay, so I'm thinking I might need to change it into a into a bit of an apricotty toning in here. So I'm going to do that right now and change my thread. Back in a second. Okay, so I just done a little stitch there just to test it. So if it was nice and small, if I needed to um, go over it, it's only a small area to go over. But I actually like that. It really comes in there. I'm also going to pop in some oranges too, which will help um, make that colour seem like it's meant to be there and not look like something that shouldn't be there. So I am going to travel with it. Just sort of going to jump over to certain areas because I am going to go over 
the highlight with the oranges, I'll be able to colour those, uh, sorry, um, cover those in quite easily. But you can see the areas, um, the sections that are that brighter colour, I'm now colouring in. Moving up here, working way up in here. And don't be frightened to, to travel a bit, it's um, perfectly normal when you do quilting is to travel and you can see how that's really giving it some extra texture and uh, colour, you know, the sunset -y colours. Sorry, I'm going to just trim that off. I'm going to come in from the side. Even though it's not quite the same colour as the picture, I think that it will really be quite pretty and give it my own touch. Because um, that's what art's about, you know, this is a this is a form of art and, and it's nice to be able to put your own touch on it and not just do exactly what someone else has done. So, to say yes, okay, I used I used that photo, but I ad-libbed and, and made it my own. And with enough change that you can really tell and say, oh look, I changed the colours to suit myself because you know I like these colours better than the colours that were in the photo or in the picture. But um, you know, if you don't want to, you can just do exactly what's in the photo. Um, either way is fine, there's no right and wrong with it and um, it's just what you prefer. Once you've got a bit of confidence you might do a bit more of your own ad-libbing. It just depends on uh, how you go and your confidence levels and stuff. And like I say, no quilting police allowed. So. see that it's taking shape with this little colour. It's really adding a bit of a highlight in. I hope you can see that developing. across from one side to the other. You want blending. You don't want to stand it too much. Oh no, I don't need to. Just looking at it. That's why I was throwing some of the oranges. Um, I don't want it too bright, of course. I know there is a bright orange there, but that's more for the sky. Um, I'll throw in some oranges. Goldy colours to help blend in some of these colours. Otherwise, it's a bit black and white, really. Nothing blending. So I'm looking at it. I might just pop a little bit on this side just so they marry up on either side. Um, and I might just put a, a little bit here. Not that I have to, just because, again, like I said, that ad living thing, make it my own. I might jump across here. In between there. It just looks like it's meant to have that colour now. Come across here. 
blending. When I blend, I go back and forwards, and I, I tend to go into the previous colour just to help it bleed in. Okay, so again, I'm going to change my thread because I think I need to go into the goldens color, or golden colours. I'm going to trim my threads in a second, and I'll be back to carry on. Okay, so now I've changed to this sort of goldy colour. So it's got a sort of almost like a greeny gold to it. And it's going to, again, give me some more texture and balance and colour into it. And again, I'm not going over every single inch. I don't want to go over every single inch. I want to leave some of the the colour from the actual photo in the background. You can see that's the colour there and because of all the oranges it tends to look gold, uh, greeny. I'll use a goldy colour. And I will blend it in like I did before. So that's got to go <laughs> and then I'm going to leave that yellow visible but I think I need to put that goldy greeny colour in those trees so without it being an actual green it's still got that bronzy sort of in and I will even though I'm not going to put the yellow in the bottom part I will actually put it in this top part because I think it'd be a bit silly to do the tops of all those and then leave that out that would be a bit funny whereas that doesn't look unusual in between there Oops, it is. okay so I'm going to put that on there be very close to the tree, right up to it, gives it that definition. And just for colour's sake, I'll add a little bit into the bottom part so it doesn't look out of place. You can see it's sort of really giving it some shape. shadowing and you'll notice that it really looks different once you put it with the blue which is fine just if you ever look at I was just saying to dot it off the camera if you ever look at water most people sort of say if you ask them what colour water was or the sky was you'd say blue well there is a bit of blue in them but the majority of it is all different colours so you need to look at something and go well you know, water has greens and purples and dark browns and all sorts of different colours in it and it's never black and white you know the sky is not always just blue it does have creams and whites and greys and all sorts of wonderful colours in it and and all those together as a a mixture is what creates the, the beauty of it so if you can grab that into thread and pull it into your, your piece of artwork you know you've sort of mastered it and you do do a bit of auditioning with your thread I'll just take a quick look at this to see where I'm up to I need to do a bit up in there and maybe a bit along there and, and then I need to change colour.
machine gets a bit cranky when I do this sort of stuff. Most of you would already know that because you've listened to it before. Um, but she works well. Works hard for me. Okay, a little bit up this end, just along that fence. make a judgment call and I think I'd be happy with that being finished in the in the bottom there and I'm about to do all the trees now so I'll um, trim these off and I will get back to you once I've got my thread changed okay so what I've done now is I've changed my machine to a zigzag and I've put it down to about 1.5 on the width because I only want a small little zigzag um, now with this you do lots of little jiggy sort of motions, sort of circular and jagged motions and you'll um, see that happen. Um, I do need to speed up a little bit to do this. And you'll see it creates another texture and I am leaving gaps purposely because I do want to fill it in with another colours um, one being a really nice um, olive green dark one and this gives a great rendition of leaves and shrubs too find you getting too um, satin stitchy, I suppose, and you need to change direction. It's a really good way to fill up as well if you want to fill an area quickly. It's really quite good. Goes in all different directions. You can see I don't go in the same direction all the time swap from one to the other and at the start it'll look a little bit mishmashy but it will take shape once you do the highlights. If you can see my hands, I'm doing lots of little sharp movements in different directions. My elbows are down and my arms are down, so I'm not sitting there with my wings up. So I'm a lot more relaxed. The other 
thing is too, you don't want it too rigid either when you're doing this in film. Or you want to <coughs> sort of, you know, leaves sort of stick out, little branches and all sorts of things. And you just want to follow that lead from Mother Nature. And the beauty of this is you can jump around, I can just go over here, fill in a bit of this. And I will end up um, coming back over some of this as well with another colour just to help blend in some different tones. You don't want it all one colour looking grey. Because no matter how dark and one colour it looks, there's actually more than one in there. There's a couple of colours and of course we want to add that little bit of artistic licence and create our own version of our sunset. just talking and saying that this thread, even though it's like a more like a gunmetal grey, in the camera it's showing up like a bright blue. So you know that when it's finished it's actually a grey. Um, but it's gonna be interesting to see how it shows up on camera, not too sure. It might be a case of seeing if we can take a photo and adjust it accordingly. not making the edges of the trees look like they're perfectly you know grounded because trees aren't and I'm adding a few little leaves and branches in and Robin's cracking it um, as I go just to add a bit of character keep turning it because I want to actually see where I'm going. It's nice to see what you're doing. And to help highlight it, I will go in between with um, that goldy orangey colour and bring up the highlights in between of the sunset behind it. So 
so you can um, it'll really accentuate the, the tree, the darkness, and the lights. Now, another tip with this is if you pull too hard and too fast, you will break your needle. Um, it's not a matter of when, but uh, if, but when it is. Um, it's pretty normal to break a needle or two while doing this because you do put a lot of pressure on your, on your needle um, jumping around like this. Um, and that's perfectly okay. Just do what you normally do and change it over and get on with it. I tend to use um, um, what they call superior needles, the titanium ones, because they withstand a little bit more of a beating. And I tend to do that with things a bit of a beating on like the sewing machine and needles. Remember, if there's something you've, you've stitched and you don't like it and you want to change it, you, you can always go over it with the next colour. Or, um, you know, travel back up and get a little bit more thread. And the ones here in the background, behind the tree, is sort of... will help them come forward. I'm going to stop and cut off because I actually want to come up here but without a whole heap of, I don't want a big zigzaggy line. Um, so I'm just going to sort of jump around here just to bring the leafage into it. And again, I don't want to run a big zigzag up there so I am going to stop and Still keeping with that motion that I had before because you know I want it to look scruffy looking like a tree would. <laughs> Fill in some gaps. And I'll just pause here. actually finish all the colours and um, get some structure about the leaves. They're sort of going to look a bit mishmashy. Um, but uh, they are starting to take shape. I've got too much gap here so I'm going to go and fill that up. change my thread because I think it's time to put another colour in there. Looks very much like a tree. So I'm going to throw in a green, olive green, and this is going to be my highlight. So it'll be a lot of stop starting um, because I'll be doing bits and pieces. Just cut that off. That'll avoid my big tail. 
Okay, so I'm going to use this olive green and um, it's going to appear quite bright, but um, I'm only going to do it in the highlighting areas and um, you'll see why. Again, lots of little movements. It's just accenting what I've already done without it looking like I'm overdoing it. So I'll move it across. Um, I'm basically creating a break in between the, the branches and you know, the bushels of leaves, I suppose, or the, or how else to explain it. See there, I've got a bit of a straight line going there. I don't want that, so I will go back in and muscle up a bit and make it not so obvious. If I want something to be really bright, I'll sit on one spot for a second and do a bit of a satiny stitch. Um, like I said before, I don't want to overdo it either. There's a lot of stop start, a lot of jumping around, which is fine. It's very easy to cut these threads. And the nice thing is when you've done it, you've created your own little embroidery. It's really free motion embroidery when you think about it. And um Very effective. photo they're quite dark areas. I want to sort of highlight the graduation of the change of colours. So it's like I said earlier it's not going to all be black and white and blue and grey. It's going to be all different colours. be the only green I put in it. If I need any of the stems to go over the top of the green I'll do them afterwards at the end just to um, show that they're in front of the, the leaves but stressed about that. I think that just blend in nicely.
bobbin came up before, I actually stitched it in because um, I didn't really want that light grey, white colour down. see where I need to go. Probably need to do a little bit more in here just to even up the, the sides. So I think that's enough green and I'm going to now trim all that and change my thread over. So I've now changed to a goldy colour and you'll see why in a minute. Um, because this is my true highlights. And you'll see them taking shape. And like before, it's little bits. It's the edges of the tree where the sun hits. To stop starting, lots of cutoffs. But because you're doing mainly around the edge, you tend to finish it fairly quickly. It's not it'll take you hours to do one little bit. See, it's got that nice goldy colour, but not too bright like a bright yellow would be. too you don't sort of want to go all the way around the tree and make it look like a halo it sort of comes in from underneath sorry about that bean that's my husband cutting wood <laughs> so 
So you can see I'm going in between, just picking up on those little areas. And there are only a few stitches here and there, just to pick up on them. I'll try and talk over the wood, the wood colour outside. <laughs> and um, it could literally be one or two stitches on a zigzag. okay to leave some areas unstitched like I said earlier it's um, sort of adds to the creativity of it sort of work around from one side to the other. There's no real master plan other than to look where the next highlight is and fill it in. And I think that um, it might need some of that apricot colour, um, which will look like the, the ground is reflecting up, which is nice. I think that's, I mean there's a little bit more on that side, I might pop a little bit more on this side just to even it out a bit, I don't want to bite the sun's on one side of the tree and not the other, so it needs to look like it's behind. swap over to the apricot colour again and um, I'll be back in a case. So I was going to put an apricot but I changed my mind because uh, once I put it up against it I decided it was going to be too bright and I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle. So I'm using a, like a coppery brown and I'm going in between areas I did before and creating some new areas.
it with me. Maybe no fingers or thumbs. So you can see that that's starting to really give those bushels of tr uh, like stems of leaves some real shape. And highlights. Again, I don't want to overdo it, but I do want to get build up the texture of it. And I'm still inclined to actually put another darker thread in there, which I probably should have done a bit earlier, but that's okay. Out of battery on the uh, memory on the uh, movie cam, so I've just jumped ahead and I'm doing a straight stitch now to do the sky. You can see that I am literally jumping areas and leaving big gaps, um, and there's a reason for that because I want the background to come through, I don't want to take it over, so I will literally back and forward, nice and simple. Okay, so I've changed colours about four times and um, I'm just up to the last little bit. I'm slowly bleeding it in straight stitches but back and forward into some nice zigzag motions, uh, not zigzag, straight back and forward motions I should say. Um, I don't want it to look too structured, I'm just about to get in. Uh, and I will just trim that off. I'm going to show you what I've got so far but I think I need to put a bit of that purpley one in there and then that's my last one so I'll quickly do that before we run out of memory on our card. Okay so it's a lot darker than what has been there but I'm going to just leave it in. Take a photo of the finished product and you can see what it looks like. A little bit more over here. 